Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, we're back in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, this is going to be going over a little bit about the video I posted yesterday uh, with the objects being able to grow and shrink through blueprints. Uh, this video is going to be an overview uh, or a discussion about you know some of the main points of how this blueprint works. Uh, it's not going to be an exact tutorial. Uh, I may do one of those later, but this is more of a kind of a discussion on how it works in general. Uh, I'm using the latest version of uh, Unreal Engine 4, so uh, 4.12.5 is what I have. And uh, it's a couple of different types of objects that I'm using uh, in general. Um, I'm using the first person template, so I got everything from them uh, for the character. Uh, the only thing I did really is just I created custom input actions for primary firing and uh, secondary firing. And that basically calls the weapons. Um, and the overall grand scheme of the project that I'm working on is just uh, mostly like physical based stuff. Um, trying to do uh, fun game mechanics, maybe end up making some sort of game out of it, like a puzzle. Uh, but uh, right now I'm working just strictly on this growing and shrinking mechanic. Uh, and it uses a gun, quote unquote, uh, that fires from the camera to you know, X location and makes the object grow or shrink. Uh, left click is growing, right click shrinking, and you can go back and forth. And what you'll notice uh, on here, I have a, I have a good amount of uh, variables here. Uh, so let's look at the center one. Uh, one of the more important things that we're gonna notice here is uh, the growth type. This is an, uh, an enumerator where you get all axes, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so when it's set to all axes, you know, it grows all together. If it's set to like Z, for example, it's going to grow up. Like, doop. And then so on with X and Y. Uh, and it will grow based on the uh, pivot point. So if you notice, the pivot point is kind of like right at the bottom center. So let's say, for example, I roll it this way and I set it to Z. It's going to go like that. And I've got a couple other variables here, like default scale. So let's say, like, for example, uh, I don't know, we, we make this like 0.5. Oops. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then 0.5. So right now it's much smaller, but I have these variables called max scale multiplier and min scale multiplier. So basically max scale multiplier, it's going to tell it to grow at this point five times as big. So it should grow, you know, to 2.5 in the Z axis, which, it, you know, we assume it does. And then the shrink is 0.2, so it's going to you know, it multiplies 0.5 by 0.2 and does that as your scale. Um, and then we also have uh, variables uh, called growth rate uh, and shrink play rate. Uh, this just, as it kind of name suggests, uh, it tells it how fast to grow um, and how slow to grow and shrink. So let's say, for example, uh, yeah, let's go back to this one. So let's do all axes and let's set, let's say eight, set the growth rate to two. Stand back, grows really fast, shrinks. Now you got a little tiny cube. Oh, and then it comes back up. Uh, what's cool about this too, um, depending on how fast the growth rate is, this may or may not work, but uh, you should be able to jump on this and, you know, it lifts you up. So we got a cool mechanic here where it just, you know, automatically like, recognizes a collision with the player. And you can actually go up and down. So you can kind of create these fun, like, stepping ladders. So it's pretty cool. Got a couple ideas with it. And I also have this launcher uh, that launches... Uh, the same kind of cubes to so make them grow and shrink. Uh, something else I do as well, uh, because they're physical objects, 
Uh, I scale the mass of the object as well uh, accordingly. Uh, that's why you'll see uh, default mass. So this one's 5,000. Uh, so the, the mass also gets multiplied by this uh, min or max scale multiplier. So it gets heavier or lighter, depending if it's growing or shrinking. And I also have the ability to turn off and on uh, physics. So if I want like, I don't know, one of these things to be just be floating in the air and like rotated in a weird way, I could just turn off physics. Now it's in the air, and you just do it in the midair. Uh, but when you don't have physics enabled, uh, the whole kilogram thing doesn't work, uh, but that doesn't really matter for these types of objects. Uh, so get, just to give you a quick kind of look, uh, in my first person character, uh, I took out all the weapons and stuff, I just kept the camera and the mesh and the capsule and the uh, movement component. But I added this child uh, component. Uh, you just gotta type in child and you'll see it, child actor. I don't give it a class by default. Uh, and its location is kind of temporary, doesn't really matter right now where it's at. Uh, but what I do uh, on a event begin play, I, I assign uh, the growth gun to the player. And the growth gun, you know, has this kind of logic in here that we don't really need to pay attention to at the moment. And then once it's assigned, we have the primary fire, which is left click, and the secondary fire, which is a right click. And what I do, I basically make sure that the player gun has a valid class. And then if it does, I call player gun master. And player gun master is just uh, a very simple blueprint right now. Um, it gets a re reference to our player character, gives us some starting events. Uh, for primary fire and secondary fire, uh, has a variable for weapon line trace distance and uh, perform line trace uh, function. And then I created a growth gun blueprint, which is a child of the master, uh, the player gun master. So then the growth gun has this variable uh, for weapon line trace distance, has the player character variable, and it also has uh, that line trace function. So perform line trace, and any time I can just perform a line trace. And that'll be available to me to any gun that I get uh, that is a child of the player gun master, which is super convenient. And then basically in the player gun for the growth gun, you know, I have a couple booleans, you know, checking for firing. It forms a line trace, and then it checks to see if the object that I hit is a class or child class of the grow master. So right now the grow master is just these cubes. Nothing great about that. Um, but then uh, for primary fire, that's when we want to grow. So we just check to see, you know, hey, do we already have a growth object? Just a reference to a grow object. Okay, we don't, then we'll make one. And then we'll check to see if the grow animation is actually playing. Um, if it is, we don't want to tell it to play. We want it to just delay, keep going, checking. Um, and we want to see if it's actually finished playing too. Because uh, if it's not finished playing, you know, we don't, we don't want it to stop unless we tell it to stop. It's kind of confusing and kind of hard to put into words exactly what all this means. Um, but in the Grow Master is where you'll see most of the logic. Uh, see the Play Grow animation, it's a timeline from zero to one. And I basically, this is where we have the enable physics. And if it's true, this is where we set the mass. So we're overriding the mass. And we're doing that by multiplying the default mass by the max scale multiplier when growing. Then we're multiplying that by the min scale when we're shrinking. And then we have a switch uh, for growth type uh, because we want things to grow differently depending on the growth type. So if it's all axes, you know, we take the alpha that's coming from the grow animation, you know, the zero to one. And we're lurping between uh, the current world scale and uh, the maximum scale that we can have. So the max scale multiplier times the default scale, put into a variable called updated scale. And then we set the world scale 3D. Um, there's a couple other things like this right here. We can get rid of that actually, we don't need it. Uh, but for the Z axis, for example, uh, we do the same kind of thing, except that in, up here, the default scale is solid. It's not broken. Down here, we break the default scale and we only multiply the Z by the max scale multiplier, and then we remake the vector. And we do that for all directions. So, you know, the X and the Y, 
and then the Z. And then uh, for shrinking, kind of the same idea. Uh, you multiply the scale multiplier by the default scale, or you make the vector. That's pretty much it. Um, and then most of the other uh, logic that I have, uh, like the overlapping and adding velocities, this is all placeholder for right now. Because um, I'm running into a small issue uh, where uh, for these objects, the ones uh, moving up and down, all that motion that we're seeing, uh, it's kind of, it's faked. I have a check here for adds impulse. So if that's turned off and we launch, see how it doesn't move? Like you would expect the box to kind of maybe move up a little bit, like go flying. Uh, but it doesn't do that. I think it's just because uh, we're growing the object. We're not really moving the object. So when I add impulse, that's where, you know, we see that happen. And the add impulse logic is kind of confusing. It's going to be a lot to look at, a lot of wires. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I get uh, when we overlap, I have a little small collision box around here. Uh, anytime there's an overlap, we check if it's a static mesh actor. Uh, we get its velocity, we save it, we store it. We also add the object to uh, an array of overlapped objects. So, so that like if there's two boxes, you know, they'll both be sent flying. So I'll show you that real quick. Lower this a little bit. Have all these objects, and they all go flying up. Uh, and it's also the add impulse is based off of a couple of things like mass uh, and uh, the base impulse we have. Uh, so it's a little hot, kind of confusing to read. It's jumbled. Uh, but essentially, you know, I get the mass, I multiply it by, uh, or I divide uh, the base impulse by the mass, I get the velocity coming in, we do a bunch of math there. You know, if I make a tutorial, I'll go into more detail on that. Uh, but then I just set the physics linear velocity, I add it to its current one, and we get a decently believable situation. Uh, so say, for example, the base impulse that's at 10,000, I'll switch it to 1,000. Now we don't really see much, but let's say I add, make it like 5,000. We got a little bit of a bump. And it's also dependent on the mass of these objects as well. So right now they're 10 a piece. Now if we make it two, for example, it should go higher up. <laughs> and there they go. <laughs> So it's a lot of cool dependencies that I have here. Um, trying to think, I think that's pretty much it with the growth gun. Um, I still want to get this logic better. We're adding an impulse and things like that, but uh, it's a pretty cool me mechanic. Uh, actually, another cool thing you could do, depending on the direction, is you can actually push objects when it's not in the Z, when it's like X or Y. You can push the object. And I believe the faster the animation, the stronger the push is too, which is kind of cool. Uh, so let's make the scale multiplier 10. Let's make the growth party like, like 4. <laughs> let's not make this a physical object. <laughs> Try that again. Where did it go? Oh, it's right there. Yeah, sometimes... Like if the play rate's too fast, you'll get like weird reactions. But you got like a nice cool push like that. Uh, something else you could do too, you can kind of angle it. You get a physics object. Uh, we can tell it to not start awake. We can kind of launch it. Uh, I don't think that's, yeah, that's missing. Let's see if I can get it a good hit. 
This looks good. Looks promising. Okay. Yeah, it kind of works. Kind of doesn't. There's a lot of things to tweak with it. But uh, I think this is a good mechanic uh, for puzzles. Uh, different things, different ways to solve. Uh, especially with like launching objects, uh, changing its mass, maybe breaking through glass, or having to, you know, uh, fit an object within a certain space by shrinking it, um, launching objects in the air, things like that. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to see a, a tutorial, uh, you know, a more in-depth look into these blueprints, uh, let me know. I'm going to put a, a poll uh, on the video. Just let me know yes or no if you want to see it. And uh, I'll give it like a week and we'll see where it's at. Um, and if it looks good, we'll make a we'll make a tutorial. We'll go over everything. It might be one or two videos long, depending on really how far we get into it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so I look forward to uh, hearing what you guys think. Uh, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Maybe if you have a solution as to uh, the impulsing here, uh, let me know. Um, but also, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps a lot. Uh, but for now, I'll see you guys next time.